Yeah, so I just want to um, talk a little bit about what we can do in our daily lives to give ourselves the maximum possible health in old age. And we know that how we live our lives has a, has a big impact on us. In fact, most of our longevity and health, 80% in fact, is determined by our epigenome, not by our DNA. And we can change our epigenome by how we live. So what can you do now? Well, if you're getting sufficient food, if you're eating three regular meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or even eating snacks in between, we know that that's not going to give the best chance of longevity. Um, and certainly overeating will be even worse. So what I do is uh, I like to skip at least one meal a day. Um, we have you know, enough food in our household and our meals tend to be large to begin with. And I try not to snack. Uh, I like to, to have tea and coffee if I get a little bit hungry and you do get used to it. Now, you may not want to skip breakfast. You may want to skip lunch. You may want to skip dinner. It's different for, for every individual. I also just want to point out that if you're young, if you're a teenager or in your 20s, this probably isn't for you. I'm talking more about people who are middle-aged, who whose metabolism has slowed down. And we certainly don't want to suggest malnutrition or starvation as any way to improve health. That's the last thing that we want to, uh, to talk about. Or, uh, or hint that that could be helpful. This is more about being, um, you know, at least some part of the day, a little bit hungry. And we've, you know, we've known this for thousands of years, how that this actually is helpful. What we didn't realize was that what happens when you're hungry is that these longevity defenses, these longevity factors that I'm describing to you and others get turned on. If we sit around all day, if we are always you know, eating or not uh, feeling hungry, our bodies will relax and they won't fight aging. So this is one way to turn on those defenses against aging. Uh, do a bit of exercise. Lose your breath a few times a week if you can. If you don't move, get up, walk at least. Um, do, do some weightlifting as well. I, once a week at least I try to lift something. Uh, I do some wrestling uh, with our son as well. That helps. I talk about hip hinge exercise. This is bending your hips and lifting weights. It's very important to particularly keep your hips strong from walking and bending because uh, just in the US, every 19 seconds, somebody falls over and breaks a bone. And this is just as bad as getting cancer in terms of survival. Uh, you might want to talk to your doctor and get tested to see what's what's working in your body and try to counteract that. You can also have uh, devices on your wrist that can tell you how you're doing. And I do that because, I mean, not I don't take blood tests a lot, but I do try to monitor to see how I'm doing to see if things are working. Sleep well, reduce stress. This is all important stuff. Sleep is actually intimately tied to these longevity genes that control the pace of aging. And here's one you may not have heard. Uh, you want to eat plants that have been stressed. What do I mean by that? Well, red wine is an example of a food stuff that's made from uh, grapes that have been stressed. Uh, you probably want to eat um, plants that have been grown outdoors or dehydrated. And we actually, farmers actually know that if you stress plants before picking, such as orange trees, you, you can put a nail into the stem and it will produce better fruit. The reason is that plants produce their own molecules to improve survival and longevity. And we believe, and we've got a lot of evidence, that when you eat those molecules from the, the food, you mimic exercise and you mimic fasting and hunger. Uh, we call this xenohormesis. Um, so I've given you a lot to think about today. Uh, you can read about the new discovery uh, online at nature.com. It's it's out there right now. Um, I've tweeted about it. There's a free copy if you want to download it, if you don't have a subscription to Nature Magazine. And in my book, Lifespan, I talk about not just why we age, but what we can do about it in much more detail than I've told you about today, including what I do and my family does. And my father is 81 years old with no diseases, in perfect health, 
and he's literally stronger and fitter and arguably happier than I am. So it's not a clinical trial, but he is a beacon of hope for all of us.